What's good, y'all, man? What is good, y'all, man? We're back with another video, another wrestling video. And this is the problem with the money in the bank from Super Kick Studios. Super, Super Kick Studios. Mm, now, yeah, I, I do believe there is kind of a problem with the money in the bank. As y'all know, money in the bank is coming up in London in two weeks, I think. Yeah, two weeks, pretty sure. July 1st. And, uh, you know, the card for the men's is filled up. And I think we got either one or two more women's on the women's side to, uh, you know, to uh, join in. And it's some, somebody from the Raw. So tomorrow night, tomorrow night from Monday Night Raw, we will get the final member in the Women's Money in the Bank. But, um, yeah, uh, next week. Next Saturday, or ne like sometime next week, I'm gonna do my prediction after SmackDown. I'm gonna do my prediction just in case they don't. They uh, I'm gonna wait till Saturday or Friday night just in case they um throw in another match, throw in, throw in another match. But y'all yeah, get that prediction later on. But yeah, there is a there is a money something wrong with the money in the bank. Um. It's just, it's, it's, it's used to elevate stars, you know, and create, elevate stars to the main card, the main type, the main card scene. And, uh, Triple H announced that the money in the bank can be cashed on on anybody, on any brand. So a foe can go over to NXT because they combined NXT with the main roster. So now it's all in one NXT Monday Night Raw and Friday Night Smackdown all in one. So, uh, so, uh, yeah, man. Um, the money in the bank we can cash out or cash in on anybody. Uh, any title, it could be the United States title, like we've seen with Austin Theory, and it could be cashed on Seth Rollins' title, which I, I'm gonna put this down. So, uh, yeah. Now, the problem with money in the bank. Is that for one lately the money in the bank it hasn't been hold, held for a long time as you've seen with the women the women's money in the bank you know Liv Morgan cashed in on Ronda Rousey the same night and Austin Theory he did hold it for kind of a kind of for a while uh he cashed in on Seth Rollins yeah I believe yeah yeah he cashed in on Seth Rollins I think and uh, he got the one, two, three, and now he's the United States champion. So, uh, do y'all think he deserves, or do y'all think it should be cashed in on any title in the company? Any any title in the company? I don't know. But the money in the bank, people really don't really care about the money in the bank anymore. People used to, people really did used to, until it started becoming like a joke. I seen that Otis won it one time. Brock Lesnar won it like for a boom box. You know, my favorite money in the bank. And the great was actually the greatest cash in of all time. People know it as the bank heist of the century when Seth Rollins held it all the way into WrestleMania to cash in on Roman and Brock. And what a moment. It's still one of the greatest moments in history. And went down in history books as the greatest cash in of all time. So we're about to see what Super Kicks got to say about the money in the bank and what the problem is. Before we start, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Sorry for the long intro. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Y'all ready? Because I'm ready. Let's go. In 2005, WWE introduced the Money in the Bank contract, a brand new creative element used to help those on the cusp of taking that next step into the upper echelon of WWE superstars, get a world championship match whenever and wherever. The only thing you needed was the presence of a referee. And early on, the concept oh, yeah, was a hit. It was helping who people think, who ascend to... Who y'all think is, was better? Edge? Edge's cash-in or Seth Rollins' cash-in? I was there for Seth Rollins cash in, obviously, but not Edge's. 
But you can, you know, Edge, he could. I, I'm, I'm gonna say this. Seth Rollins to me, one of the Seth Rollins to me, greatest cash in of all time. But I will make an exception for Edge because I did go back and watch that. That was, you know, that was clean. <laughs> I did go back and watch it. But I think it also goes down in, because it's the first. It was the first ever Money in the Bank. Heights, giving stars an Showing opportunity to meet top guys and carry world championship gold. The past few years, however, WWE has strayed away from everything that made a success, yeah. and it's been a complete mess. The execution track record has been astronomically poor, and this is coming from someone who's a huge fan of the concept and honestly just wants to see it return to its old glory. Creative elements stop being special when you stop making them special, and the Money in the Bank contract holders have really felt like afterthoughts the past little bit. Not suggesting that everyone has, but we haven't seen the concept do what it's designed to do and that's elevate most of this coming yeah. down to the core of most on-screen wrestling problems and that's booking and of course the selection of the winners let's talk about last year's winner austin theory first what happened with this cash -in was effectively wwe devaluing what should be a golden ticket to superstar exactly. for one for one bro just got thrown in the money in the bank bro bro just got thrown in the money in the bank no warning no you know, no uh, match to qualify, no qualifying match. Just he was just thrown into the money in the bank, and he won it that day. I didn't like Adam Pierce when Adam Pierce came out. Duh, duh, I about wanted to slap the ball head off, slap this big old ball head. But over the months, though, over the months, over the past year, I did, I have gained some respect for Paul. Uh, Paul Pierce, man. <laughs> Saying to their fans that we had no end goal in mind with this. He cashed in what should be a world title match on a mid card championship yeah. and an open challenge, no less. To repeat, Austin Theory chose to cash in his almost guaranteed world championship victory on a secondary title on, during an open challenge. Let's be honest, though. Let's be honest. Nobody was going to buy into him as a champion. Nobody was going to buy in on him. He shouldn't. He people saying he should have cashed in on just the Universal Championship at Clash of the Castle, and then Drew McIntyre to win and beat Roman for the WWE. Now they did say I did hear that that was the original plan, and uh, but they didn't go with it because it would be too confusing. But still, come on, bro, too com too confusing. Everybody would have got it. Everybody got it. It would have got it. It was, it would, it would, yeah, it's simple. But you know, you know, the higher ups, nothing really is that simple with them. Challenge that no one answered after his opponent had been beaten into a pulp and he lost. There was no real justification as to why we didn't have someone come out and even attempt to preserve the concept. The rules were just changed on the fly and another cash in was wasted. In retrospect, the field cashing stings more now that we have the World Heavyweight Championship, but okay, I guess it does make some sense. There was virtually no way he was beating Roman. Exactly. I'll give him this one. But let's keep going. The year previous was one of the very few bright spots in the contract past six or seven years, and that was Big E. Someone who was a logical winner, a guy who needed something to bring him to that top tier, and he ended up becoming WWE Champion. His subsequent reign was not handled well and he was made to look like a weak WWE Champion, oftentimes taking a backseat to whatever his challengers were doing. But what the contract did was give him that initial reign, put his name with elite company so that they can build from there, with stronger booking, the right tweaks, a more serious approach, and of course health permitting, Big E can still be a big player for the WWE. By virtue of his win, it at least did something to say that this guy belongs here. There's been so many times where the following reign after the caption just isn't strong, but once you put them up in the conversation with former WWE champions, you gotta do things to sustain their credibility and justify the win. Before him, Otis won the Money in the Bank contract, and this was a disaster. WWE. Dude. I, I wasn't around the 2020 era, which I'm so good going back and watching. I was so glad. I feel like, but you can't really get mad at them that much because it was since there was no fans, they was just experimenting. They was just seeing like trying new things and seeing what what works, what, and see what looks cool and what works. And that was with that money in the bank. The 
if you didn't see it, the money in the bank that year in 2020 was instead of, you know, going into your casual ring, climbing the ladder, retrieving the briefcase or whatever, you start, you started, they started both, actually, it was the men's and women's money in the bank at the same time. They they had theirs going at the same time. But I think you could, you, you could have got, they got away with it because there was no fans. So, um... You know, the matches, both matches was going on at the same time in the same area. And it was kind of, it was just, you know, something, something cool you could have put on, uh, you could have put on, on Peacock. Something cool to look back at. But it was, you started down at the performance center. Then you fight your way all the way up to the, to the roof. No, it was the headquarters. It was the headquarters. And you fought your way all the way up to the roof. And you, you, you grabbed the ladder. You climbed. And you retrieved the briefcase like a normal match would. But it was just a whole lot going on in that match. Of the men, women's and men's got mixed on in together. Uh, there was a spot. Bro, there was a spot. I forgot who it was. I think it was Corbin, but I don't know. I forgot who it was. Or maybe it was Al- Al- Alistair Black. But whoever it was, literally threw Rey Mysterio off the building. Bro, they threw Rey Mysterio off the building, never to be seen again. And that was crazy. Obviously, there was a uh, crash pad. But that was crazy. He looked like he got thrown off the roof. And uh, the winner, or the way... He, it was concluded, which was kind of weird, was uh, uh, two people was fighting at the, at the top. I forget who, who it is, but two people was fighting at the top. They unhooked the briefcase. They bobble it, bobble it, and it fell into Otis's hand, and Otis was the uh, became the winner. So then that leaves the question, who should have won you know what i mean who in the money to bank who's the current winner is it the one who unhooks the briefcase or is it whoever has it in their possession i mean i believe it's that whoever has it in their possession last so you know it was a cool concept something cool to throw on with no fans but you could not pull that off with fans Obviously. We had no idea what to do with him. You could tell that they didn't have plans for him to win a world yeah, title or be a main guy. Really and through his reign as Mr. Money in the Bank, he was never a threat. Always goofy. The contract was a lunchbox at one point, And you knew this guy's in a tag team. There's no way he actually does it. What made matters worse was when he lost the contract, it was because of his tag partner Otis who turned on him. The turn was never explained, they didn't have a proper rivalry, and they ended up drafted to Raw and SmackDown with it never going anywhere. Otis went back to being a tag wrestler. If they planned for him to do something, why he just regress? That's the forward thinking that's been missing. It was thrown onto him for the sake of shock value. Eventually, the Miz won the contract from Otis, and he filled his cash in, got it back via storyline shenanigans, cashed in, won the world title for a grand total of eight days. And what did that eight days really do for the Miz? Transitional eight champion days? and W. See, I told you I wasn't even aware of this. So the Miz, I see, I I kept seeing pictures. Of the Miz holding the WWE champ- the current day WWE championship, and uh, you know he, I'm like, wait, the Miz won a championship? How? I've never seen anything except that one picture with the Miz holding up the title, and I believe it's this one right here. And I was like, bro, when did the, when did he win? And of course. It wasn't this one, it was the picture before, but of course it was in the performance, or the, the, uh, quarantine era. So I guess, you know, I don't, I don't even know who, I don't even know who won off of The Miz. That's how so, I, I wasn't even watching at all. Concept. The others in that match, AJ Styles, Aleister Black, Daniel Bryan, and Baron Corbin. 
getting to Corbin, he filled his cash in, and I feel like this is where the whole unraveling for Money in the Bank really started back in 2017. Corbin fell flat on his face, and personally, I'm not sure how I would have felt if he would have succeeded just two months after holding the Money in the Bank. Was it the right time for him? I don't know. After him, it was Braun Strowman who won, and this was actually logical in terms of the winner. A guy who had been around for two years, they let him develop, be part of big storylines, showcase him, and now he just needed something to take that next step. He cashed in ahead of time, got his match with Roman Reigns at Hell in a Cell. That match ended in a no contest when Brock Lesnar showed up and tore the cell door off. Sticking with Lesnar, 2019's men's match saw him win, and I love Brock Lesnar. Yo, I've seen this, man. Brock Lesnar, 2019, Brock Lesnar won the money in the bank. I don't think he needed, I didn't think he he needed the money in the bank. It's Brock Lesnar, bro, could be gone for a year and a half. Come back, demand a, a, demand a championship match, he gets it. It's like Charlotte Flair. It's like Charlotte freaking Flair. But, um... Because who's going to tell Brock Lesnar no? Who's going to tell Brock Lesnar no? Because I'm not going to tell him no. But, um, but yeah, the money in the bank, bro, Brock Lesnar himself is the money in the bank. He can cash in whenever he wants to. Next guy, but he didn't need it. At the time, there was probably a much easier and less convoluted way to get exactly. to Rollins and Lesnar at SummerSlam while also giving the opportunity exactly. to maybe a so back that's what they were trying to do. Get Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins at SummerSlam. Just have Brock... Either attack Seth Rollins or uh, demand a match. It's Brock Lesnar, bro. Who's going to tell Brock Lesnar no? Who's going to tell Brock Lesnar no? That's how we got Charlotte versus uh, Oscar at Money in the Bank. Who's going to tell them no? Not I. Or a Balor. These are just a few examples of the mess that's been on the men's side. But the men's is nothing compared to the rushed out product we've been getting on the women's oh, yeah. side. Of the six winners, five of them have held it for a day or less. Aside from the cash ins, it's barely got a history behind it in terms of actual. actual sustained Miss Money in the Bank runs. The women's match was introduced in 2017 and up until this point we've had one woman, that being Carmella, who's had a sustained run with the briefcase. And even the way in which they crowned the first Miss Money in the Bank was more convoluted than it needed to be with them making amends on the very next SmackDown. Alexa Bliss, Liv Morgan, and Bailey all cash in their contracts within hours of their win at that same event. Nikki ASH just 24 hours later while Asuka was awarded the Raw Women's title again 24 hours after she won, though that's no fault of her own, is it now, Mr. Rollins? I want to talk quickly about Nikki Cross's win. I said earlier how this can help someone stay at that top tier of superstars. Her title ring lasted 32 days. She didn't do anything inspiring during her time as Raw Women's Champion, and she hasn't even sniffed the top end of the women's division since. In the really women's just, I don't know. I don't. Buy, I can't buy you into her. Her kept. Both of her character gimmick, the the superstar one, or not the superstar, the super, the superhero one and the uh, crazy one, I, I just never could buy into none of the none of the two gimmicks. Gimmicks. It really feels like they want that contract to be done with as soon as possible, and they opt for creating cash-ins the night of rather than playing the long game. This concept shouldn't be given a pass. It can be better, it should be better, but they're just going through the motions with it every single year. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, well, there's always next year. With the winners, you're not just devaluing the concept, you're losing development time. You're losing months of having someone assume that role and what could have been an easy decision by just selecting. Uh, I was gonna also say, bro, at least let the women's wait At least let the women's wait until SummerSlam, the very next pay at least the very next pay-per-view. I mean it beats winning it it beats winning it or cashing in on the day of. Let them cash in at least in SummerSlam. Um you don't gotta always have uh crazy crazy cash ins. I mean you should, but you know, I don't think they can try to even if they try, I don't think they can recreate the bank heist in the uh, uh, the bank heist of the century of WrestleMania 31. Um, it's just like what makes that so special is because the person carrying it and he carried it everywhere, bro. bro he carried it every pay per view, every shows. 
He carried it all year long. And then he cashed in on Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. Um, but, um, yeah, you don't gotta make it, but you don't gotta make a cash in like that. Just make it a little bit longer, you know what I mean? Just make it a little bit longer. And have at least a match, a little, a little mini match. Someone who's hot instead turns into a muddled mess because of shock value and the selection they go with. You don't just create a new star because they win money in the bank. My examples are always Rollins and Edge that when this concept yeah. is given care and time can be a game changer and really help the trajectory of someone's so career. Greater, of the 20 cash-ins, men and women, so only Austin Theory, Baron Corbin, and Damian Sandow have actually lost the match. Even though Cena failed his cash-in, he still won the match via DQ. Strowman's was a no contest. So the success rate is high. And that's not suggesting that every cash-in needs to be a successful one or that every winner needs to tease cashing in multiple times before they do. But just keep them as a threat and use the time while they're holding it to your advantage. I read online that some people want to see the concept retired. I really disagree with that. Yeah. I don't Seth Rollins, uh, yeah, 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 but though, the Seth Rollins one was just, it was perfect timing. Um, the Money in the Bank retiring, I thought it was actually going to retire the Money in the Bank this year. Or no, they were going to move it, they were going to move it to WrestleMania. That's what I thought. Y'all remember the rumors of the Money in the Bank moving to WrestleMania and then a couple of weeks after after the rumors was going over around um triple h and them announced the money in the bank in london so um you know yeah but uh yet again what i was going to say earlier wrong not everybody needs a rollins type cash in i do feel like you should carry it around you can carry it around pay now nah, payback payback did get announced for this year, but I don't think pay, payback's not really a cash in type. Cash in type, you know. I feel like you should cash in at either SummerSlam. If they have Clash of the Castle, I was looking, I don't think they have Clash of the Castle this year, but SummerSlam. Um, maybe, maybe. Nah, because if they're only doing their only uh, UK show this year. Or this, this next pay per view. So either SummerSlam or Survivor Series in WrestleMania. Bro, Survivor Series would be low key. Survivor Series would low key be underrated. You wouldn't really expect it. You wouldn't really expect it. But really should at least be some or right to decision by just selecting someone who's hot instead turns into a muddled mess because of shock value and the selection they go with you don't just create a new star because they win money in the bank my examples are always rollins and edge that when this concept is given care and time can be a game changer and really help the trajectory of someone's career. Of the 20 cash-ins, men's and women's, only Austin Theory, Baron Corbin, and Damian Sandow have actually lost the match. Even though Cena failed his cash-in, he still won the match via DQ. Strowman's was a no contest, so the success rate is high. And that's not suggesting that every cash-in needs to be a successful one or that every winner needs to tease cash-in in multiple times before they do. But just yeah. keep them as a threat and use the time while they're holding it to your advantage. I read online that some people want. Have like the holder go up to each champion. Not teasing it. Not teasing the cash-in, but go up to each cha champion and, you know, warn them. You know? Warn, hey, you know, you better watch your back. You, you better watch your back. You got these feuds with these different people, but always know that I'm lurking and I can strike any time. I can strike any time. But to see the concept retired, I really disagree with that. I don't. Nah, we don't need it retired. We don't need it retired. Now, it would have been cool if they had it at uh, WrestleMania. The pay per view maybe needs to be retired. Maybe, but since you have men's and women's, probably, it probably won't ever get retired but the money in the bank as a, as a whole should never shouldn't get uh ret re retired because it pu push pushes new star or not new stars but you know people who are not really that big like for example this year in the men's side every single person has never been a world champion and 
uh, with LA Knight, he's the biggest, super, the most po one of the most men, popular men superstars out there. So you might as well, you might as well pull the trigger. But I'm not gonna say too much about it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save that for my prediction. Think you really can with how big money the bank has gotten? Plus, what's the point of? putting it away for a little bit and then making a big deal of it when it returns, I think the revival of it should come in the way that the holders are booked. A good cash in creates drama, tension, suspense, and when done right, leaves you with a moment that a superstar's career was either catapulted or revived. Now let's talk about this year, who should be Mr. and Miss Money in the Bank. I think it's Ellie Knight's time. Yeah. He's got everything to be a clap. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say money that. the bank holder. I'm He's going to be a guy who, if given the opportunity, will have the ideal run with it. He'll be funny. He'll cut great promos. He'll be sleazy. Be, He'll be entertaining. He and these are the times, the pinpoint moments, where you can just... Yeah, yeah, it's been it's such a mess of pack. Yeah, I think the rest of us talked about uh, this year's money in the bank and predictions. But I'm not going to get my prediction until next week, bro. I'm not going to get my prediction until next week. Um, so yeah, what do y'all think about the money in the bank and how it's been used over the years or these past couple of years? And, uh, yeah, who y'all who think should win the money in the bank this year? I can't say my, I can't say my predictions yet. I'll tell y'all my predictions at the end of the week or next week. But yeah, if you like the video, man, please like, comment, subscribe, turn the bell notifications. I had a, I was going to react to a flight video, but if you go to flight's last video, his last 1v1, this fool had the camera on the ground. What, you couldn't even see anything. He did, I did see he win though. He did see, he did win. He did win. So yeah, flight view, man, please like, comment, subscribe. Turn on bell notifications. Tell me when I should react to my next video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.